Today my guest is Magnus Persson. He is the former VP of Global Sales Effectiveness from Noble Biocare. He is the former um, Global Head of Sales and Business Development from Dental Access. And now he is our Head of Sales for, of Circo Medical. Magnus, thank you for being part of our podcast. Thank you for taking the time. Thank you, Ben. It's a pleasure to be here with you. It's always nice to see you. <laughs> thank you, Magnus. Um, you have worked in the dental industry for a long time. What drives and motivates you, Magnus? So uh, with my uh, engineering background, I could obviously have worked in uh, very many fields of industry. Uh, for me, it was always important to work with something that would produce products uh, that, that has a meaning for, for the end user that is significant. So for me, it was uh, natural to go into uh, medical devices uh, because I think this is something that will make a difference to the life of people. I mean, I could have worked uh, designing weapons or uh, cars or something like that, but that would not give me any uh, personal satisfaction at all, even if it can be exciting technology. So, so it's really to, to work with things that can have a positive impact on the quality of life of people. And uh, being uh, in Gothenburg, it was natural to go into the dental implants because that was where everything started mm -hmm. and I got the, the good opportunities there. You, you, you have gained a lot of expertise over the time, especially medical academic knowledge. Um, what would you say, how far are you away to becoming a dentist yourself, Magnus? Uh, it's, a, it's a difficult question. I don't know which of, the, of the, the tests I would pass at dental school, but uh, for sure, uh, from a theoretical point of view, I have uh, gathered a lot of knowledge and experience by seeing uh, some exceptional clinicians work. Mm -hmm. uh, and also uh, attend a lot of scientific congresses have given me a lot of, of uh, in-depth uh, knowledge uh, in, in, in the implant and the prosthetic uh, part of dentistry especially. So I would say there, from a theoretical point of view, I probably have uh, enough uh, knowledge uh, for, for being a dentist, <laughs> but then there are other areas uh, of dentistry that I don't know anything about. So. Yeah, I would be a very um, specialized dentist if, if I, <laughs> I became a dentist. Okay, you need a lot of help from, from other people to yeah, yeah. fulfill the, the whole job of a dentist. Yeah, yeah. Um, Magnus, let's dive into the, to the topic today. And the topic is the patent reduced workflow. And um, you were one of the key persons to develop this reduced workflow. Um, can you take us through the entire surgical and prosthetic procedure? And especially, yeah. um, why is it saving a dentist time and how much time? So, I mean, f first of all, to be able to um, uh, work and, and develop uh, workflows and, and uh, productivity improvements in the practice, uh, you need to see uh, a lot of procedures being done in different countries by different clinicians to see what the, the hiccups are and, and where the time savings, savings could come in and so on. Um, and then to uh, materialize the savings or, or the efficiency gains, uh, you, you need to, to work uh, both from a procedure point of view, but also from a product point of view to make sure that yeah. you have very... Uh, efficient workflows and components that support the workflow. Um, with, with patent, there are two major workflows that, uh, that are very efficient and, and, and uh, they should be compared to one stage surgery uh, with a conventional system because it is a one stage surgery since we have an integrated abutment on the implant. So it's uh, basically tissue led. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so, so the first one is the more traditional one, and that would be that uh, the, the implant is placed, uh, you wait for the healing, uh, then you cement the post, prepare it in the mouth of the patient, take a conventional or digital impression, and then you have the lab fabricate the crown, 
you get it back, you have the patient back, and you cement the crown. So it is a very simple workflow where you don't need a lot of components or instruments. Mm -hmm. You can work with conventional dentistry, which uh, is something that people are normally very uh, uh, skilled in and, and, and are very fast to do. So you would actually save uh, around uh, 30 minutes of time uh, and you would also save significant money on the, the fact that you don't need so much accessory components as you yeah. would do with the conventional system. So if you do 100 implants per year, it's, uh, it's 3,000 minutes. So, so uh, that is a significant amount of time. But this is, again, quite similar to a one-stage procedure, normal one-stage procedure. Uh, the real benefit is if you would work with what we call the lab uh, procedure. So this is something that is good for the dentist, but it's also good for the patient because there is less work done in the mouth of the patient. And normally the patients don't like to be treated. Yeah, so if sure. we can reduce the time for the patient to be in the chair and to be treated, it is also a good thing. So, so what you do then is that you place the implant and at the time of surgery, you would take an, an impression on the implant in the right position with a full arch impression. Mm -hmm. This is done without impression copings or scan posts if you would do a digital impression. Uh, and the reason why this can be done is that uh, the uh, end result or the end position of uh, the soft tissues is very predictable. With the, with the conventional system, you will always have some remodeling and recession of the soft tissues, mm -hmm. which makes it a little bit less predictable where it will end up. With our system, we have a very good surface and a very good uh, material so, so that the soft tissue stays on the implant in the position okay. where it starts to heal. So that allows you to take the impression already at the time of surgery. The impression is sent together with the glass fiber post to the dental lab. At the first, um, this yeah, the you first do this step. all at the at, at the surgical uh, at the surgical step. You send the impression together with the glass fiber post to the dental lab. The dental lab would uh, prepare the model and uh, and uh, prepare the glass fiber post on the model and fabricate the prosthetic restoration. The patient would come back after the healing time and you could cement the post and the crown already at the second visit. So that means that you would cut out at least one visit from the conventional workflow and you would save a lot of time. In this instance, it's uh, around 60, 65 minutes. So it's more than an hour for one implant. Wow, that's a lot. It's a lot of time. And, and again, if you, if you do 100 implants per year, uh, it's uh, 6,000 minutes. And, and that is, uh, is really significant. Uh, and again, you have all the benefits with the, with the fact that you don't need a lot of accessory components mm -hmm. and, uh, and instruments. So you, you combine the impression taking with the, the, the surgery at the, at, on, on, on the first step. As a patient, you only have three appointments instead of four. Yeah. Oh, that's a lot. What was and, the... And, 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 Sorry, and, and the other big advantage is that, uh, I mean, in the first workflow or in the conventional workflow, all the prosthetic work in, is done in the mouth of the patient. Yeah. In this instance, uh, all the work is done in the laboratory outside the mouth of the patient. And, and uh, it is a less uh, impact on the patient if they don't need to be there with the mouth open and have yeah. you prep with a diamond in the mouth. Um, if they can avoid that, I'm sure they would appreciate that. So yeah, for sure. Um, who, who, there are more who than just likes um, that. <laughs> to no, be. no, not really. Even yeah. if it's not painful, it's, uh, it's still uh, uncomfortable. What was the obstacle? Um, or which obstacle did you face development, developing this process? Um, did you face some obstacles or how did you, uh, and how did you solve that? Yeah, it was not so many obstacles. It was more to, to uh, uh, realize the benefits with what we had at hand and see the opportunities, how you could apply this system in a rational way. 
to to really uh, uh, get a, an effect, effective workflow uh, and 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 utilize conventional dentistry, which allows a lot more dentists to be in, involved in the prosthetic part of the implant treatment. So it, it, it is a um, it was not really a lot of obstacles, but you need to understand well uh, the workflow in the practice and yeah. where the time is spent. Um, it, it is super clear to me, and, and, and a lot of people don't think about that, but the, the dentist really is the one who generates uh, the business in, in the practice, and, and he, he needs to change the patient in the chair to be efficient. And yeah, the sooner sure. you can do that, the better it is, of course. So that, yeah, it is about saving time, but still do it in a re reliable and, and, and uh, serious way, of course. You should not do shortcuts and things like that, but, but utilize the system to the max to optimize the, the workflow. And did you come up with this whole workflow alone or did you have some help from other dentists? Or other I mean, uh, Dr. Yeah, Dr. Feit, uh, uh, who developed uh, the patent system, uh, had, had worked in a, in a similar fashion, uh, not exactly like this, but, but, but in a similar fashion. Uh, so so the, the opportunity to work with the laboratory was, was uh, explored. So it was just to streamline that process that we had to do to... Uh, to come up with this uh, with this process. Perfect, perfect. Then um, let's wrap this podcast up with, with our three questions. Um, the first question is, Marcus, what are your goals for the near future? I mean, for me personally, I really would like to put the zirconia implant in the mind of the dentist as, as a, a valid alternative. Uh, right now, if a patient comes in and asks for an implant, that equals titanium implant in the mind of the dentist. For me, the, the, the short-term objective is really to, to uh, make them think, okay, the patient needs an implant, so what kind of implant material do they need? Uh, because zirconia today is a valid alternative. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, I don't think it's fair to the patients that the dentists are taking decisions to for the patient without informing them about all the alternatives. Ah, okay, cool. This sounds sounds like a good goal. And um, the second question is, Marcus, when you um, think back these times, all um, and you you visualize yourself as a young Marcus just starting out, um, joining the dental industry. What advice would you give yourself, your younger self? What with the expertise you have now, what, what tips and strategy would give you your younger self? Yeah, to, to become a dentist, maybe. <laughs> no, uh, joking aside, I, th I think uh, uh, coming from a different industry, I think it's super important to uh, uh, invest a lot of time and energy to understand how this works. Uh, so even if you work in a very small uh, part of a, a big system, I think it's it's really important that you try to understand how your efforts fit into the big picture and how it has an impact on the daily practice of a dentist. Um, and to do that, you obviously need to uh, read and listen a lot related to the clinical field, but also ask questions, um, see a lot of uh, clinical procedures, see how things are done in a dental laboratory to really understand how things fit together yeah. because then you can come in with a, a different uh, expertise and actually provide valuable insights so that would be my advice to really try to understand how things work get and, the whole and, picture and, uh, from the yeah, yeah. And the big picture and last question to wrap up our podcast is um magnus where can we find you outside of work um do you have hobbies or, or some else? Where can we find you? When? So, uh, yeah, I have, I have uh, some hobbies. Uh, I like to ski and do, do sports in general, but uh, uh, recently my time has been spent in a, in a new house I have uh, in, uh, in Italy where I had to do a lot of uh, renovations and, okay. and things like that because it's a very old house. 
but uh, I really love it there because you can benefit from nice weather, good yeah. food, good <laughs> wine, and many times uh, good company as well because a lot of friends come and see me there. Perfect, perfect. Magnus, thanks for being part of our podcast. Thanks for taking the time. And I wish you all the best in the near future. And yes, that we have a long, long working relationship together. Thank you. Thanks for having me.